The Soybean in U.S. During the 19th century, Manchuria was the main producer of soybeans, with 80% of Manchurian exports being soybeans and 90% of the world's soybeans coming from Manchuria. However, at the turn of the century, U.S. slowly replaced Manchuria as the foremost soybean producer. As World War II broke out, many countries had to rely on the U.S. for soybeans as there was a need for vegetable oils and fat, in addition to a source of quick protein when meat supplies were low. And between 1924 and 1945, acreage of soybeans increased eightfold, from about 1.8 million acres to 14.2 million acres. With the soybeans demonstrated versatility, it seemed to be the miracle product that would replace everything. Chemists start to make plastic out of soybeans, which seems to have the potential to replace a plethora of things, such as telephones, steering wheels, car plates, and much more. However, the main driving factor in which soybeans had become such a major crop is the rising demand for biofuel. By converting soybeans to ethanol or biofuel, there is less greenhouse gas emission, and in 2005 the U.S. put in place the Energy Policy Act that mandated 7.5 million of renewable gas by 2012. However, these two usages, amongst with many of its other usages, are less than ideal and not by any means efficient. Plastic, in the present state of development, costs more per pound to produce than the articles they could potentially replace. Furthermore, modules show that huge inefficiencies in biofuel production means that the conversion of soybeans to fuel is not cost efficient. As fuel demand is sure to increase, more and more land is needed to support creating biofuel. In the end, soybeans are nowadays mostly a cash crop in the U.S., Yet, it is not an efficient source for most of its non-food usages. So why do we keep using massive amounts of land to grow soybeans for inefficient purposes in the U.S.?